Hi, good morning. Welcome to the Windsor Star News Cafe. I'm Don MacArthur here with Dylan Christie and our special guest, uh, John Sutton. He's running uh, for mayor of Amherstburg. Yes, so thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to the voters of Amherstburg today, and uh, hopefully you've got some good candid questions for me. Well, okay, exactly. Well, uh, thanks for making the drive. I, I make it uh, every day. I live in Amherstburg now just to yeah. get that out all on the table. Uh, I moved there last summer, and then boom, uh, the next day, headline after headline after headline. Is it as bad as everybody's been saying, John? No, it's not as bad as everybody's been saying, but there are challenges. There's no question about that. I mean, that was something that I asked directly of Mr. Lanoue, who did the uh, report for Deloitte via the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing. And uh, in his words, he terms it a financial challenge, but not a financial crisis. So I think it's really important to understand that there's two uh, competing factors that lead to those challenges. One is the debt level itself. Now, let's just, so is it... A bunch of different figures. So, is it 47 million? 46.6. Okay, so if we round so, up, it's, it's 47, 47 million. 47 million. The sure. bulk of that wastewater? Yes, okay. if, if we want to break that down, when I came on council first elected in 2006, there was 14.8 million in existing debt. So that means over uh, the course of my two terms, we've added 32, 31, almost 32 million. Okay. 22 million of that is directly attributable to the wastewater treatment plant another 5.6 to the Libro Center. And so that, you, leave, you know, you leave about $4 million from there. And so for that $4 million, it was the completion of the storm and sanitary sewer separation, major road reconstruction projects like Laird Avenue, Dalhousie Street, Murray Street, the third concession north, the third concession south, sixth concession north, Low Side Road, the new water tower, on and on and on and on. So these projects were necessary in terms of uh, infrastructure, in terms of uh, providing the ability for the town to grow, to attract new investment, both residential, commercial, and industrial and it's the debt level is still within provincially mandated levels mm -hmm. and we can pay it down in a timely manner what's added to it was the spending of reserves without council's knowledge or approval and that was contained in the Deloitte report as well that council was operating under what I believe was the correct assumption that if those reserves were to be used for a purpose other than which we intended that would come back to council for our you know permission because there may be certain that, that's circumstances a assumption you right. can't have administrators going rogue spending money that council has approved so the big question out on the street you know the neighbors yes. we go out we talk about this kids are on the bikes right how does that how does it happen well a uh, complete breakdown in communication for sure uh, I think Texas Road is a, uh, a watershed moment for us all. Council had asked the uh, administration to come back with a plan of how we did that road. Uh, that's been put on the back shelf for years, delayed, 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 and the residents obviously very concerned, very upset at those delays. Uh, so administration came back with a plan that said debenture $1.5 million each year, break it into a two-year project, use $800,000 from development charges and $600,000 from reserves. Lo and behold, the day we're going to award the contract, the day we're awarding the tender, well, put the brakes on. Those development charges have never been collected. They just sit there as an equity item on the balance sheet. And the reserves have been spent on other purposes. So why in the world would you give your decision-making body in budget that type of false information? So we need to, to get that clear. We need to obviously to ensure that the uh, uh, information presented to both the community and council alike is verifiable and transparent. And I believe that that buck stops with council, council's buck stops with the mayor, and it's been one of my platform pledges that I'll ensure personally that that information is correct. All right, well, you do have a five-point plan on your website yes. that you kind of break down. Um, one of them is debt reduction and reserve replenishment, where you say you plan to develop and implement plans that will help to replenish these reserves. Uh, can you expand on that? Uh, what are some of the um, strategies that you'll have to kind of, I'm assuming you have to be creative, you're gonna have to Absolutely. figure something out. The first thing we have to do is start planning long-term. That's never really been done in Amherstburg, mm -hmm. you know, not to go back 20, 30 years, but obviously if we were doing it back then, we'd be in much different shape. So we have to begin that now. We have to look at what's coming down the pipe three, five, 10, even 20 years from now develop those long-term plans, look for the funding sources, how much do we need to be putting aside today in reserves so that money is there. That, that'll help us long-term. And the immediacy we have to look at, and this is included in the Deloitte report as well, the sale of non-core assets. Mm -hmm. So there's certain lands that the, the municipality owns that could be declared surplus. Obviously, proper debate has to take place on that. Right. But we could earmark funds from those sales towards reserve replenishment and or debt repayment, depending on you know what the will of council would be at that time. Uh, I think we also have to look for ways to uh, you know save money. 
Uh, we missed a great opportunity during this time with uh, the management of our water and wastewater treatment plant. Uh, administration came back with a recommendation that we renew that contract, which is uh, all in probably about $2 million a year, uh, to extend it just for three years without going to tender. I argued that we should take some time, go to tender, make sure we're getting the right bang for the buck. The excuse that was given, and I deem it an excuse, was that uh, they needed to debug the new wastewater treatment plant. Well, anything that's in there is industry standard, and any operator worth their salt should be able to do that. Our current provider might be the cheapest, but we can't go by mites or maybes or, you know, we like the guy, he lives next door to me, he's a good buddy of mine. We're dealing with public funds and we have to ensure that we're delivering that service in the most cost-effective way possible, including a business case to see if perhaps it would be cheaper for us to take over that in-house. So if I'm elected mayor, those types of good financial analysis will take place. Council will be given the options, they'll make the decision and then administration will implement that. Okay, Essex Power Shares, am I correct on this? You wanted to sell them? No. What I said was, again, we didn't because have... Because you voted against the motion not to sell them. Right, right. And that's so the problem. So by default, doesn't that mean you wanted to sell them? Well, if you if you were there to listen to the debate, you would have heard my uh, actual comments. Mm -hmm. And that was, we didn't do our financial uh, analysis. No one could tell me that if we sold those shares for $12 million, what long-term effect that would have on debt reduction and reserve replenishment. Obviously, no one wants to sell an asset. All I said was, but, but, let's do our homework. There was a motion not to sell the shares. That's correct. And you voted against it. That's correct, because I felt that we still had time. We could have asked for an extension. Let's do the good financial analysis Should and get, get that information out there. where do you stand there. on it now? Well, again, let's do the analysis and see what makes sense for the community. If it makes a long-term sense to keep the shares, that points us in that direction. Mm -hmm. If it makes a long, uh, more sense to sell, then that points us in another. But at the end of the day, that's the will of council. Uh, the mayor is just one vote. I would be in favor of, of looking at that and investigating it, but I'm not going to stand here today and say I land on either side. I just think we need to do our homework. Okay. Um, and then when it comes to, there was a lot of votes about whether there should be an audit, whether we should call in the OPP, whether we should do all of these things. And again, I wasn't at the meetings, I'm, right. I'm here running the website, but right. Julie Coates was, and, uh, and uh, Monica Wilson was. Yes. And in the stories I read by them, it, there seemed to be a pattern in how people voted. And you were always siding sort of with, there, there was sort of the band of three, which I think was Sutherland, maybe uh, Pouget, and... Um, someone else, and then there was the four that were always voting them down, and which included Hearst, and you were among that four. So how do you reconcile that? I mean, like, we're, we're trying to blame sort of, it seems we're trying to blame Mayor Hearst for this mess, like someone's responsible for the communication breakdown, and on all the key votes, you came down on that side, it seems. Well, I think you have to look at each individual vote and see where you were voting on. Mm -hmm. So the, the independent audit that was asked for, we get an independent audit each and every year as required by the Municipal Act. None of those audits demonstrated to us the status of reserves, the fact that budgets were being changed without council's knowledge or approval. So I said, why are we going to spend more taxpayers' dollars to get the same result? That's Einstein's definition of insanity, right? Doing the same thing and expecting something different to occur. I said from day one, let's let the facts speak for themselves. There were all kinds of rumors about missing money, and obviously we've had the OPP, we've had the independent auditing firm of Graham, Sutherington, Dreger, and Hicks, we've had uh, the firm of Deloitte via the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing assure us no fraud, no malfeasance, no criminal wrongdoing. That's when you would go to a forensic audit level to check those things out and to build up a case. We don't have that existing. In fact, I asked Mr. Leloup from um, Lanou from Deloitte if there was anything in their review that suggested we need to go to that deeper level and his answer was very clear no we do not mm -hmm. so the bottom line if we're going to spend taxpayers dollars let's have evidence let's not just you know go off half cocked and you know uh, uh, in a vain attempt I think to uh, placate people or give them their pound of flesh as others have suggested you need to be a leader and you need to say this is what's going on and this is the course I'm going to suggest so once that uh, financial picture was laid out to us in December and the complete picture was before us, I was the one who came back and made the motion for the province to get involved based upon that fact. They came back, we asked for an audit, they came back with financial services review, their reasoning being that uh, based upon uh, input from the residents, administration and council alike that we were better served with that because they agreed with my stance. The audit wasn't going to serve us any better or give us any further information. That was really about the policies and procedures that needed to be put in place around how reserves are spent, around how budgets are, are dictated. 
you know, et cetera. So I think that bears out. There was a recent four to three vote again on uh, the alignment of Sandwich Street. Uh, our solicitor sat there and said, if we change that road alignment without going to, you know, a, a source that could back it up scientifically, we would incur liability on the town. So when I vote, I vote based upon what's best for the town, not who votes with me or who mm -hmm. votes against me. I mean, you know, that kind of four to three split, I think in people's minds, there's some kind of predetermined caucus that goes on, and that's not well, the that's case the at all. That's, that's how it appears, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, but appearances aren't always uh, the, the truth, correct? They I can't mean, be deceiving, but yeah, optics are important. Well, yeah, well, optics are important, no question, but I think I can stand, because I've been consistent all along on my message, that when it came to our finances, I wanted facts. I wasn't going to deal with rumor or conjecture. I wanted to get the facts out so we could make good financial decisions and relate those decisions, be accountable those to, to those decisions to the community at large. All right, well then maybe jumping on those optics, I think a lot of candidates, we've had a few in on the show yes. um, that are running, who maybe are new to politics, uh, they're running kind of, they're campaigning against current council, mm -hmm. saying that um, this all happened under their watch, yep. um, they're to blame, they can't be trusted. Is that coming at the door as you go around? And uh, what are you saying to kind of ease those worries um, that this kind of happened after, um, on old council and- On your watch. Be, on yeah. your watch, yeah. Well, we're having, I have the same conversation at the door that we're having now. We right. get, I get a lot of great questions and that's welcome. I think it's a great opportunity to engage residents and that's part of my plan as well. And so I don't shy away from the responsibility. Some of uh, the candidates I'm running uh, against are pinning it on the CAO, right? The CAO is responsible. But listen, the act is very specific. The act is very clear. Mm -hmm. We as councillors are responsible for the actions of senior management. Whether you're aware of it or not, you have to take responsibility for the following. Ministerial follow responsibility, uh, sir. Absolutely, and I, and I accept that. So you, you take the responsibility and you say, okay, what are we going to do to fix it? What are we going to do to correct it, to right the ship, and ensure that we're moving in the right direction together? So that's what a, I think a good leader does. No one's perfect, and, and you admit that there were mistakes made. And more importantly, you come up with that plan to fix them. And I think I've done that uh, throughout the campaign. And that's, uh, you know, worked... Uh, uh, or I should say it's been responded to well uh, at the door when I'm talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. What's morale like at sort of Amherstburg Town Hall? Because from an outsider looking in, there's been turnover, there's been new faces, there's been allegations, there's been, it, it really seems like it's chaos. I mean, you're there every week or, you know, checking in. Mm -hmm. Is it or, or are we getting it wrong? But I mean, it certainly seems there's been crazy high turnover at very senior uh, positions. Absolutely there has and I think there's a myriad of reasons for that a lot of which unfortunately we can't get into because of you know you're talking about identifiable individuals and uh, we live in a litigious society but uh, I think what's more important now is realizing that the people who are there are the right people in the right places. That was another uh, item. John Michelli's coming in, right? Yeah, John Michelli's coming in. A, a great background. Our new director of uh, finance is a wonderful, wonderful, sharp man. And uh, Deloitte themselves said that they've gained confidence in that team. Mm -hmm. And that what really needs to happen is for the community and council to get behind them as we implement the 41 recommendations. So uh, I, I think there's some uh, fear. Uh, they've, they've had people, you know, suggest that they might lose their jobs as we move forward. Forward. And I mean, that's not a, a fun place to work work at when people are coming in from the outside saying that, often with very little knowledge of what's truly happening. So I think, you know, this next council it has to start with them. It has to start with the leadership at the mayor's level, which I'll provide. And my message would be very simple. We don't have to agree, but we do have to agree to get along. Mm -hmm. We've made it far too easy for you folks to sell papers. Way too easy. I wish we, it would make it easier. You know, <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think we would like to give you more good news stories, right? Yeah, and that doesn't mean yeah. you shy away from the tough things that are happening. There's always going to be challenges in a municipality. We, uh, there's a national stat when it comes to infrastructure that municipalities get eight cents out of every tax dollar and we're responsible for 60% of the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So when you do the math, you realize why people get behind the eight ball at times or why they rely on debt financing in order to do these much needed projects. So we need to work with the feds and the provincial government as well to provide that sustainable funding long-term so that we can actually you know, uh, build sustainable communities together. Okay, you guys recently passed a bit of a tax increase. It really wasn't that much. Yeah, it's pretty uh, small. All in it was uh, just uh, 
just over 3.5, I believe. I don't have the exact figure in front of me. So with all the headlines, that seemed like a sort of a very low tax increase. My fear is that you guys are waiting until after October 27th, then you're going to whack us with the, the 10 percenters. So is there a, how are we going to, you know, so this money, you have these great plans. We, you know, we trim the fat here and there. But ultimately, like, are my taxes and my neighbor's taxes going to go up? They have to, right? Well, that's where we need to develop the good long-term plans around debt uh, repayment and reserve replenishment. This particular budget started it. We talked about putting some properties up for sale and earmarking that towards reserves, but we really didn't have the time at that point to develop that long-term plan. I made a motion during budget deliberations, which was unanimously supported, for us to do that and to come back with those plans. So we'll implement those and, and we'll see. I mean, the bottom line is, as we move along, there are financial obligations. There might be some, you know, Buckley's medicine we'll have to take that uh, we don't like, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll move forward. Uh, I can't stand, stand here today and say taxes won't go up, but I think uh, what I can commit to is that we will ensure that we're going to ask you, the residents, what service level you want. We'll bring back budgets to support it, and we'll look for the most cost-effective ways to deliver that service. Okay. We've been a little tougher on you than some of our guests here, but that's that's, okay. the, the situation uh, sort of demanded it. But listen, I moved to Amherstburg uh, because it's it's a beautiful community. I used to cover uh, politics here as a cub reporter, and, and they like their politics bare-knuckled. Uh, Absolutely. In Amherstburg. Absolutely. Very, uh, citizens are engaged. There's a debate tonight at uh, the Verity Club, 22 candidates going for five spots tomorrow night, uh, deputy mayors and mayors. So sort of want to put it up on a tee for you now. and. Give your message to the voters. You're a lifelong Amherstburg yeah. resident. You love the community to, despite its problems. So why should we vote for you? And why do we love Amherstburg so much? Well, there's three keys, I think, to this election. Uh, there's leadership, vision, and experience. And I'm the only candidate who has all three. I'm the only candidate who's presented a plan from day one on how we can build a better Amherstburg. And that is founded on good, solid community input, not special interest groups or, you know, the groups that might attend council meetings, but giving everyone a voice. It's fiscally responsible, it's measurable, and it will put our town back in the news, hopefully for all the right reasons. Mm -hmm. Part of that uh, leadership I think I've demonstrated, not only on my term as council, but uh, my long history of community service, especially when it comes to working with young people. Uh, I'm invested in the community. Uh, I was a hockey coach, I was a baseball coach. Uh, you know, there's nothing I love more than coming home to Amherstburg after, you know, a, a day of work and, and really being proud of the accomplishments we have together. Uh, we've got some of the greatest infrastructure in the county now. Uh, we've got wonderful assets. We're well positioned for future growth. Now's the time to unite under a leader and as I've said all along, put the politics aside and put Amherstburg first. At the end of the day, that's what really matters. That's what you'll get uh, from John Sutton as your mayor. And uh, you'll get, uh, and as you, you've seen this morning, someone who's not gonna duck the tough questions either, but who will look you in the eye and uh, give you the facts straight up. Excellent. Okay, John, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. We're at the Windsor Star News Cafe.